Well, hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about testicular cancer. Not a very common cause of cancer, but it is important for two reasons. Number one, it is a common cause of testicular mass, which is something that's fairly common in the clinic. And number two, it occurs to a population that we don't really see a whole lot of in the clinic, and that is young men. Now, we see young women a lot with the litany of OBGYN problems, especially pregnancy, which some may consider a problem. We see older people a lot, um, and we see children a lot. We have a whole specialty for that. Um, but we don't really see a whole lot of young men, and this would be one of the reasons why you would see them. So let's get into it. But first, if you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications <clears throat> every time I put a new video up. Okay, so testicular cancer is actually a set of cancers that arise from the testis. Um, however, 95% of them are germ cell tumors, and of those, um, about two-thirds of them are mixed components, and a third of them are pure seminomas. Uh, however, that being said, they have very, very similar treatment protocol. Um, they are very highly curable. About 95% of patients diagnosed with testicular cancer will be cured. But please note, it is the most common malignancy in men aged 20 to 34 years. Um, I, just, I just transitioned out of that range, so I'm beginning to wonder what's, what's my most likely cancer now. But yes, men from 20 to 34 years, it is testicular cancer, not a common cancer, like I said. So as you can see, these patients are fairly... Uh, you know, have, have a fairly low risk of cancer in general. Uh, risk factors include cryptorchidism, a family history, especially a sibling, HIV infection for reasons we don't really know, and testicular atrophy. Think of patients perhaps with Klinefelter's or with Down syndrome. There's a higher incidence among Caucasian or white men uh, for reasons we don't really know, and also potentially a higher incidence in rural areas, which we really don't know why that's happening. Painless testicular mass is the most common presenting sign of testicular cancer, but certainly not all testicular masses are cancer. You do need to know your differential for a painless testicular mass that comes up all the time in the exam. Testicular cancers are firm. They're, they tend to be solid or semi-solid, and they are non-transilluminating, unlike some of the masses. Okay, this is so important. A unilateral scrotal mass should be considered testicular cancer until proven otherwise. And what is the best initial step? Testicular ultrasound, okay? Very important. So initial workup upon suspicion should include the testicular ultrasound. On CCS, you can order that first, or you can uh, just order it with all these other things. So serum tumor markers, they're not very specific for the type of cancer, uh, but they are useful for tracking progress. Chest x-ray, CT abdomen and pelvis, looking for possible metastasis, CBC and BMP. Okay, this would be your initial workup, but it is fine to start with the testicular ultrasound first. If you continue to have suspicions, then you can order the rest uh, after that. This is your differential of a painless scrotal mass. Um, so testicular cancer, I included at the top because it should be, uh, it's the most urgent differential. You really need to exclude this. Uh, but these others, they are more common, uh, particularly the hydrocele and varicocele. Um, the rest of these obviously are non-malignant, non-neoplastic, um, but they are also common. And so it's important to be able to distinguish these because you don't want to go chopping someone's ball off if you don't have to, right? Okay, so here's an ultrasound, and this is a testicular cancer. What you can see here um, is that it is slightly hypoechoic, but it is also it also has this sort of heterogeneous appearance. Um, so this is characteristic for a testicular mass. Very, very firm, um, semi-solid to solid in appearance, and you'll see that on the uh, on the ultrasound. Notice another thing that this 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 
cancer is uh, is invading the testicle. It's not sitting on top of it. It's it's into the testicle. So you can see here again. Here you have two foci of tumor, and then this is the testicle right here. Now, upon diagnosis, the best initial treat step in treatment is a radical inguinal orchiectomy. Yes, that means we take the testicle out. Now, fortunately, men have two testicles, and so if you take one out hormonally, you're not going to cause that many problems. It can result in issues to fertility, however. So for that reason, semen cryopreservation is offered for patients who want to preserve their fertility. Remember that most of these patients are in their 20s and 30s. So many of them are in that, that stage of life where they are thinking of, of uh, having children. Um, biopsy has no role in the workup of a testicular mass. We never go in with a needle and aspirate cells out and look to see if they're cancerous, like we would, for instance, with a thyroid mass. Uh, we don't do that because we are concerned about seeding the scrotal sac or accelerating metastatic spread. Um, so this is always the wrong answer. Um, the only way that we can get a histopathologic diagnosis for testicular cancer is an orchiectomy. Uh, so it is the most accurate test for diagnosis. It's not the initial test, but it is the most accurate test because biopsy is always the most accurate test when it comes to potential cancers. Um, now, there is something called testicular sparing surgery for very, very small localized tumors, but you're not going to need to worry about that for your exam. Now, if you're dealing with an advanced seminoma or any kind of non-seminoma germ tumor, uh, then you're going to be also looking at radiation plus or minus chemotherapy. Uh, radiation is commonly done. Seminomas are very, very radiosensitive. Um, chemotherapy is also commonly done. Um, what we use for chemo is the BEP regimen, bleomycin, atopicide, and a platinum-based agent, usually cisplatin. Um, you can use EP instead of, so basically get rid of the bleomycin in some instances. Um, and obviously that's because bleomycin comes with pretty significant pulmonary toxicity. Do not worry about chemotherapy for your exam uh, for testicular cancer. I just included it here uh, for completion's sake. Your differential is going to include a hydrocele. Um, so basically a hydrocele, um, what you'll have here is the testicle and then you'll have this area of fluid that completely engulfs the testicle. And so often you're not going to ex appreciate this as a discrete mass on physical examination. So in many instances, these don't they, they don't present because a lot of men have these for a long period of time. Uh, so they're, they're just not appreciated unless you do some sort of ultrasound for another reason. Varicocele is a dilation or an engorgement of the pampiniform plexus of veins. So this has a bag of worms texture because it's full of blood. It's not transilluminating quite as much. Um, this is also present in 20% of men and is the most common surgically correctable cause of infertility in men. So this should always be part of your workup for malfactor infertility. Spermatocele is a sac of the epididymis. So remember the epididymis kind of sits on top of the testis. And so if you have a sac here, what you're going to see is this very anechoic mass that's separate from the testicle. And you'll be able to very easily appreciate that on ultrasound. And then a scrotal hernia, um, that can fluctuate with Valsalva because these are abdominal contents protruding into the scrotal space. Um, now, I just want to point out, though, that spermatocele is also transilluminating because this is full of fluid. So here you can see illustrations here of basically everything I just described. So to recap, testicular cancer is a set of cancers from the testis, most common malignancy in men age 20 to 34. 95% are germ tumors, of which two-thirds are mixed and one-third are pure seminomas. Firm testicular masses need to be assumed as testicular cancer until proven otherwise. Best next step is a scrotal ultrasound. If you can't rule out cancer on the ultrasound, then the best next step is to consult urology, and generally they're going to proceed with a radical archaeectomy. Remember the differentials for a painless scrotal mass, including hydrocele, varicocele, spermatocele, and hernia. 
After surgery, the further treatment depends on the staging, which is why we do the CTs and the chest x-ray. Seminomas are very radiosensitive, early stage, generally don't need chemo. Non-seminomas are less sensitive. Many of those will need chemo. And then you follow these patients up with repeat tumor markers to ensure their uh, response to the surgery and chemo radiation if used.